Evening, family. Welcome to another ep- episode of Elevated. I'm your host, the engineer, of course, that's Elevated. So, of course, let's get right into it. Oh, topic one, Ice Cube and the contract with Black America. Man, let's let's go ahead and, and get right into it. Is Ice Cube a sellout? And also, shouldn't we be working out the best deal possible? I, come on, people. Like, Ice Cube is not the it's not the enemy. And I and I gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed with how people are treating my man because politics is a negotiation from what i've seen it seems like ice cube is pretty legit he's always been the same dude for the last 30 plus years this man at 17 came up (laughs) with fuck the police And uh, I can't lie, the amount of vitriol I've seen towards my man uh, is 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 pretty ridiculous to me. I I I think that Ice Cube has a record. O'Shea Jackson has a record, and he has consistently been for black folk. I don't think you can really argue that at this point. And I think it's a little insulting to to call him a sellout because he's willing to work with either part. Now, I've watched a bunch of of Cube interviews over the last, really for the last few months, but over the last, like, week, it's been a little hectic. And I got to say, his his plan, while it doesn't go far enough, um, I will say that it's, it's something. You know what I mean? But before I even want to get into it, before we even continue going on, I'm going to do another uh, show when I really dive deep into it. But uh, I want to say pause this video. Please pause this video right now. I'll wait. I want you to pause this video and go read his contract with Black America for yourself. And when you finish reading that, come back to this video and we'll start again. So I'll wait for you to go ahead and pause this video. Okay, let's continue. So is Ice Cube a sellout? Well, did you read the plan? Should we, we should always work to get the best deal possible. I know I've already said that, but at the end of the day, I think what Ice Cube is showing us is that you should always vote your best interest. Okay? Politics is a negotiation. So I see a lot of the, on, on the other side, on the democratic side, calling this dude, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of names and stuff. I got to ask y'all, y'all really go ride, ride with a, a proven, avowed racist who's been in office for 40 plus years in Joe Biden and an actual cop <laughs> and Kamala Harris, who's had made, we all know how she made her come up. She made her come up by simply throwing black folks in jail. That's how a lot of these prosecutors get they come up. When you're a prosecutor, your job is to to have high numbers, you know, justifying your record. The easiest way to get numbers is to throw people in jail. These prosecutors have like 90 plus percent, uh, 90 plus percent guilty conviction records. And Kamala Harris was the queen of that, man. She, she, that's her whole come up. And Joe Biden, he wrote the crime bill. So if you got anybody who's in jail right now, if you a those FBA, African-American black, and you got anybody in jail for 20, 30 years for some weed, that's Joe Biden's crime bill. Do we not understand that? That is Joe Biden's crime bill. So I, I just don't, I don't buy the, we supposed to just blindly follow Democrats just because I think that we should start using our head and Cube is showing that, yeah, Cube, Cubans ain't saying nothing different than 
anybody who knows me, I've been saying for at least the last four years, five years. You can go all through my social media. It's not hidden. You, it's the least we should be negotiating. You should be getting stuff from politicians. They work for you, Ados, FBA, B1. They work for you. You don't work for them. You don't owe them nothing. They want you to vote. You. They want you to vote, but they don't want to give you nothing for it. They've had plans for LGBT. They have plans for immigration that addresses uh, the concerns. They, they, they have plans for, you know they got plans for white people. You know they do. So at the end of the day, I think we should just vote your best interest. And I believe that's the best course of action. Oh, before I get too into it, please everyone like, share and subscribe. I really would appreciate it before I go on to the next topic. So now that we discussed money, and we discuss Cube, and we discuss his con contract with Black America, which I, again, everyone sh should have read by now. I definitely wanted to focus on um, identity politics, but not in a way most people think. So if anybody knows me, they know very, very well that I am a huge comic book supporter. I really am. <laughs> so for this for this topic, I really wanted to focus on actually comic books, manga, and the reality of why comic books suck in the US. <laughs> I I I don't think people really understand. Um I read a stat the other day. Uh, I believe it was from Forbes, said that manga accounts for a third, a third of the Japanese economy. Did you hear me? A third. Do we understand that, like, anime, for the most part, is based off of manga, okay? It's actually the kind of, I'm not going to say dumbed down version, but it's the version that's kind of, made more mainstream and a lot of times they, they cut it out they make they're trying to make it as more as appeal as broadly as possible so <laughs> why am i bringing this up okay so it recently became aware that <laughs> did you all see this shit <laughs> Did you all see this shit? Oh, man. Like, come on, guys. Like, come on. <laughs> These are not my dad's comic books. Did, you, did we see this? I, I just wanted to point this out. Okay, so these are new Super A, and this has been out for probably at least a year. But um, I didn't, didn't want to talk to it until now. But... These are new superheroes. <laughs> All right. So their names are a Snowflake and Safe Space. Okay. And this gets into my point. Okay. Or why manga outsells U.S. superhero comics. Okay. So I'll get back into Safe Space. And safe Space and Snowflake in a second. But I just wanted to, I wanted to focus uh, on some data that I'm going to get from Forbes. Okay, so I'm gonna get right into it. Okay, so um, uh, this is an article, surprising new data uh, shows comic readers are leaving superheroes behind. Okay, a day after New York uh, Comic Con put uh, an explanation mark on the media dominance that superheroes exert over today's entertainment and, and popular culture, data has sh was shared in a private industry conference indicating that a massive shift in the comics publishing industry has reached a tipping point. For the first time that anyone can remember, superheroes are being outsold in their native medium. American comic books and graphic novels by other kinds of content. Notably, kid-oriented fare and Japanese or Japanese-inspired manga. 
the sales trends behind the shift were laid out by longtime industry analysis Milton Greff at a conference organized by his company ICV2, um, held at Pace University in downtown New York. ICV2, in conjunction with metrics site Comic Cron, gathers market data on the North American comics industry, tracking sales of periodicals, trade books, aka graphic novels, which of course we love, and download to own digital comics. Okay. So back to Snowflake. <laughs> Snowflake is safe space. Okay, so these are this is to my point. These are Snowflake and safe space. Notice what color they are. Okay, psychic twins. All twins are psychic, but we're psychic er. Snowflake, a cryo kinetic can materialize snowflake shaped shuriken projectiles for throwing it's like a cheap man's version of 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 fucking iceman who iceman is also gay <laughs> a lot of people don't know that safe space can materialize pink force fields oh my god but he can't inhabit them himself. He can't inhabit the fucking force field. The reflex only works if he's protecting others. Are you freaking insane? Isn't that invisible woman's powers, but weaker and like shittier? <laughs> That's Sue Storm's powers, but like shittier. Okay. They're hyper aware of modern culture and optics, and they see their superheroics as a post ironic meditation on using violence to combat bullying. They're probably streaming this. Jesus Christ. The pandering. Snowflake and Safe Space are the twins, the writer says, and their names are very familiar to screen times. It's this idea that these are the terms that get thrown around on the internet that they don't see as derogatory. If you call me a snowflake, I believe that's derogatory. <laughs> They take those words and kind of wear them as badges of honor. No, we're not twisting Snowflake and Safe Space into the new N-word. Like, no. That's fucking... Okay. Safe Space is a big, burly, sort of stereotypical jock. He doesn't look big at all. He looks like a... Man. <laughs> he can create force pills, but he can only trigger them if he's protecting somebody else. That's the weakest shit. Is, are they mutants? Are they mutants or superhumans? I got to find that out because this is some bullshit. Uh, Snowflake is a non-binary. <laughs> it goes by they and them and has the power to generate individual crystallized snowflake-shaped shurikens. Jesus, you Mary and Joseph. The connotations of the word snowflake in our culture right now are something fragile. And this is a character who is turning it into something sharp. What are we talking about? <laughs> what? So Snowflake, so these are twins. One is a gay guy and the other one is a woman who identifies as non-binary, right? Okay. All right, all right whatever. Um, Snowflake is a person who has a more offensive power. <laughs> and Safe Space is a person who has a more defensive power. The idea is that they would mirror each other and comp compliment each other. You sounds like you both suck. Magneto's going to have... He's going to run right through these fucking lame cornball-ass mother... I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So you want... You want... <laughs> you want Snowflake to compete with Naruto. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, but for the last seven years, the trade book channel has become an increasingly significant driver of revenue, gaining double digit year over year increases as comic store sales have declined. ICV2 estimates that bookstore sales accounted for 465 million in 2018 compared to 510 million in a direct market. When you add in the digital and other channels, direct market sales fell under 50% of the total 
for the first time since comic book shots overtook newsstand distributions in the early 1980s. What does that correlate with? Manga started showing up in the U.S. in really the late 70s, uh, but it really hit in the, in the early 80s. It's not a coincidence. While comic shops tend to focus on longtime fans, often older readers who grew up on and collect <clears throat> superhero comics, uh, uh, mass market bookstores sell to everyone, including younger readers and those outside of traditional comic fandom. Mm -hmm. Consequently, the books that are selling in bookstores are generally not superhero oriented. Okay? According to book scan data shared at the conference, kid-oriented comics and graphic novels account for a whopping 41% of sales through, uh, through at bookstores. Manga is 28%. Superhero content is less than 10%, down 9.6% year over year. Look at this, look at this graphic. Look at that. 28% comics and graphic novels, that's manga, and juvenile fiction, comics and graphic novels. Okay, I'm just gonna focus on the on the manga, which is 28%. Do we understand that 28%? 28%, we have 20% of our comic book readership are getting their readership from, well, Japan. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that. I, you know, I, I feel, I, I love a, a, a manga and, of course, anime, but I just find it crazy how we in, are in the U.S. Comic books have been around since relatively, well, uh, not comic books, but specifically specifically superhero comic books have been around since about the 30s um in mass I, you know ever since really superman but but there have been other you know comic book heroes jonah hex etc cetera, etc cetera. uh captain america's been around since the 40s i believe um etc cetera, etc cetera. so my thing is this the reason that comic books suck in america is because They've been taken over by all, all these identity politics and all these ideologies. That, and frankly, that does not make for a good story. It's just, you're trying to appeal to a broader audience and it sucks and the readers know it suck. And, you know, uh, the thing is, I don't want to see the Democratic Party platform and superhero comics or movies, okay? Identity politics and comics has become the norm and it's so outrageous. To me, diversity does not automatically assume quality. Marvel and DC are the two dominant houses. They care about appeal more than quality. And that's why manga is better. And I'm, I'm be honest, I believe it's time for a new black owned comic publishing house. Because you're never going to get the, the superheroes you want in Marvel or DC, period. Like, you're never, as long as they're white-owned, for the most part, comic book houses, you're never going to get superheroes, that, black superheroes, that talk about real stuff. It may be offhand, you know, a little, little here and there, but for the most part, you're not going to you're not going to get any black superman type characters. They're always going to be second to the white character. And that really goes for anyone any demographic outside of the of the white male heterosexual <laughs> uh superhero. What up Superman, Batman, uh Captain America. Every tier list of of superhero comic books whether you're talking about, I'm about to get some real nerd stuff right here, but you're talking about the real, like, basic uh, superhero level of powers. What, what do I mean? I mean, the guys like, guys like, like Spider-Man, the guys like, uh, let's say, a Wolverine, the guys like um, a Black Panther, a Luke Cage. These guys are not Omega level. They, they can't alter, you know, the universe. or the, You know, they can't be Thor. They can't be Hulk. Um, uh, you got guys like okay, there's cyborg. Okay, I mean you can always you can always go with the to me the best comic book character who is uh black or African American is 
probably always going to be Spawn, but he's still made by a white guy. I love Tom McFarlane, but again, it, Spawn is still made by a white guy. And he's definitely my favorite, way more than Black Panther ever could be. Okay, so, but that's because there's no dub. The, the, I don't want diversity, okay, um, in DC or Marvel. I want our own houses. I want our own publishing company. Oh, salute! Lopez v. Lomachenko! Oh, shit! That's good. I, I, I got to give it to him. I got to give it to him. Oh, holy shit. I'm going to edit this out, but, but motherfucking, I'm watching this shit live. Salute, salute. I, I, that was a good fight. He was, he was putting hands and paws on him. God damn. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Got distracted. I'm trying to watch it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, ultimate powered, omega level, super powered being. So you have, you know, um, it goes all the way up into the one above all. And then you go, you know, all these, you know, uh, omega level threats. None of them are black. Okay. Uh, there's no equivalent of Franklin Richards that's anything other than a white boy in either Marvel or DC. There's nothing. The closest I've seen to a mega level, but they, they, there's a way they kind of did it, was a Spawn um, Heaven and Hell um, saga when he went to war with Heaven and Hell and then they used the kids, the little black kids, and then the kids were saying and, and God, but it's complicated. But there's no, there's no one at that at that level. The closest you'll get is uh whatever is R2 or three Superman. Um and he's black, but that's because the world that he lives in is black. Basically black people are white people in this earth where the Superman is black. Which is still not the same because you're still in a world that's built by white people. I mean, the, again, we will not get real stories about real stuff that's going on with black folks, comic book, anime, whatever, fiction, which I think anime is perfect. For adults, I, in fiction and telling our story, I think anime is the perfect medium for that. Like, I seen, uh, I seen a while, there's, a, there's actually a black anime publishing house in Japan. I, I seen that we're gonna see it in that video that that uh that Pharrell video I think it's an entrepreneur or whatever it was man if they dope I hope they dope I hope they dope oh I hope they dope but uh <laughs> god a uh, real black anime like think of, think of like think of the boondocks but like just the, I'm talking about the animation style the action the 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 storytelling but think of that but like with a real like crazy anime uh, 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 um, storyline, but like based in Eidos uh, world. But imagine a whole universe, a whole comic book house where it's just black folks and not it's oh black folks, you know, we living next to uh, white people. No, 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 I mean, it's just black people. Like, it's about us. Like, you know, we have white people come in. Like, you look at, you look at anime, okay? You look at anime, and it, they talk about, for the most part, most Japanese anime manga stories are based solely in Japan. It's not racist for me to want to see black comic book characters in a world full of black people talking about black stuff doing super even if it's not superhero if it's just manga or if it's just a, a, a fiction a supernatural whatever the, the japanese manga comics are not for the most part not superhero comics they're just fictional stories and they're great they're so much better than the comic books here it's ridiculous anime is so much better than animated movies in in in, in the west like the storytelling is there's nothing like it they they touch on topics that like that we just we we're afraid to talk to we're afraid to talk about and it's that's why comic book sales suck <laughs> that's why comics suck there's no diversity it's the same people even though they'll they'll hire 
let's say they hire black women, they hire uh, LGBT, they'll hire, you know, people, minorities outside of the norm, but it doesn't matter if, if the, if the people up top are never going to let them truly flesh out stories. Man, can you imagine, can you imagine a story in DC? I, I should probably, I should probably kind of write this, but I've been thinking about it. Here's a perfect story for me for a Superman story. Imagine Superman, his son, Jonathan Kent, as cool as he is, grows up and becomes the next villain. And they've been setting up this up for like the last like seven, eight, nine years, whatever, 10 years, whatever, us getting cool with him. Eh, he's not so bad. He's, he, but then they say to him, I have a reason. He, he's the super bill. He's like the Superboy prime, right? For every reason. So Superman is so, he's so a uh, wreck of wreck with grief. He's like, Oh, I got to do anything to get it back. So he becomes like obsessed with trying to bring uh, his son back from um, the dark side. Right. And in that he neglects his personal life. Right. Cause he's just like, he feels so guilty that he let it get that far. He's like, Oh, you know, I gotta, I gotta do it. And he's like, he's in it. He's, he's obsessed with it. But in that he neglects his wife, Lois Lane. Right. And Lois Lane being Lois Lane, she's like, yeah, man, you know what? This happens all the time in relationship because the kids go bad in the rules relationships. So Lois Lane's like, Oh, Superman's not paying attention to me. My son is evil monster. She, she's, she's consulted by Bruce Wayne, right? Batman, right? Just rock and roll with me for a second. And in this whole scene, Bruce Wayne is married to Catwoman right now. I think they're still married. Um, so in this whole scene, let's just say, for whatever reason, Catwoman gets killed, okay? For whatever reason. I'm not going to say that, you know, whatever. But for whatever reason, Catwoman gets killed, right? Okay. Batman's grief struck in. He's vulnerable. Batman be a Batman. Lois Lane seeks out Batman. And then they have an affair, right? Oh, shit. Bruce Wayne just slept with, with uh, Bruce Wayne slept with Lois Lane, right? Now, this is where it gets crazy. What does a man who, who has everything, essentially, Superman, how does he handle his best friend sleeping with his wife while his son is out ravaging the, the universe? How does Superman, the guy who uh, doesn't get involved with politics as much, tries to do the right thing, how does he handle that? How's, in, how does he, how's the guy who has everything handle that? And that's what I think would be such a dope story. Batman sleeps with Lois Lane. The Superman, can he look at Batman the same way that he looked at him before? I'm telling you, that's a dope storyline, right? And it keeps, because they're never going to like truly change Superman like that, like that. Uh, but that, tell me that's not dope. Tell me, that, tell me that's not a concept that Superman has never faced before. And tell me does it have decades long implications? We'll be talking about that shit for the next 30, 40, 50 years about how Batman knocked down Lois Lane and how Superman reacted to it. I don't know how he would react to it, how he would, I mean, the Superman, how does he react to that? And that's what will make Superman relevant. But they're not going to do that in DC because they're trying to just, or Marvel, because they're just trying to appeal to just so, so many people. And manga is, is, the storylines are crazy, man. That that whole I know I've already said this, but that whole storyline applied to the hood. Man, you talking about some real crazy dope storyline. All right. So it brings me to my last topic. The realities of a black ADOS FBA B1 engineer. First of all, Expect to be alone. That's okay. The reason I want to talk about this is because I'm so used to even going off of the of the cube situation. Um, 
black folks so used to just always always needing to be you know around other people it's because you're well, i hope that in the future there you won't you all won't have this problem i hope there's going to be black engineers ados engineers d1 uh engineers um i hope that you'll see that what what you can make and it'll just come out dope and then and i don't know 50 years 30 years however long black folks will there will be far more black folks going into engineering than there are black folks going into entertainment that that's what i want <clears throat> so that's why i say you get used to being alone well one you're gonna be I am an electrical computer engineering. That's what I study, but I work in, um, well, right now, software engineering, my, my business is focused on software engineering right now, but we are, we're also expanding to other avenues of engineering and development, including cloud, IAAS, SAAS. Uh, don't get it twisted. Uh, I'm not, specifically speaking you know to the people who don't understand these things i'm speaking to the people who do understand what i'm talking about and know that they're gonna go and they're gonna <clears throat> i'm going to go and and be a part of this and make some cool stuff so yeah i expect to be alone man i'm doing this engineering uh journey for at least a while because you're gonna be working so hard anyway <laughs> Also, man, you know, <clears throat> you kind of need to expect to be questioned about everything because without a reputation, if you don't have a reputation, then, I mean, you have to, you have to build one. It's that simple. It doesn't matter what you look like, what your swag is like, even if you know what you're doing, if you don't have a reputation, then, then you don't have anything. Perception is reality. If you were perceived to be competent, then you are competent. So I think, I, as I said, I, I like doing these realities kind of kind of segments because one, it gets me focused. And uh, it, two, it's also important for other people to see, you know, this journey of how to go about it and uh, learn from my losses. So until you have a reputation of success, uh, you must continue to push. Oh, sorry. I, I just, yeah, <laughs> I just came from Jiu Jitsu. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so as we move closer and closer to the election, I'm still waiting on October surprise. Maybe Ice Cube CBA is that surprise. I don't know. Only time will tell. We just have to wait until the election. So, thank you so much for joining me for this week's of Elevated. I'm your host. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate all the support I get. Hope you can learn something. And of course, that's it. <laughs>